Okay, now we're going to start working in Pro Tools. We're going to pull Pro Tools up here. Ah, right, there we go. Get Pro Tools up, and we're going to show you some more about signal paths and using our bus and sends and auxiliary. What I'm going to do right now, though, I'm going to bring up this track I've got going on here, which I'm starting to mix, and uh, I want to show you some stuff here. Let's get rid of the transport window first, and I want to get rid of this edit window. I don't need to have this pop. That's You can bring them back if you want to. You go back to Windows. We go to Edit Window. There it is right back again. And, of course, Transport's pretty simple. There's Transport. Pop it in. Pop it out. You're good to go. Whoops. Back to here. Click on it. Where it's at. There we go. Now, I've got this track here. Let's press play. Got my drums here popping along right there. That's good. I'll press stop. Now, what I want to do here is I want to probably apply some uh, reverb uh, within these tracks and uh, see where we go from there. I'm just going to show you how we can actually do this from scratch. Before I was a session already lined up, you saw the guitar was working. Now I'm just with some drums. Uh, we're going to go here to track. It looks like the new track. Okay, here. We're going to go to um, stereo. And I want to get an auxiliary input track. I'm going to create just one. It's going to be in terms of samples, not ticks. Let's go create. And as you can see, put it right here on the outside of our master track. Now, if you want to move a track in the window, you just like click on it and you just move it right over. See that move it right over there? And bam, it's right there where you want to have the track at. Now, um, you can see here we have IOs on top. These are inputs on top. Now, the pathway for this one here is called the auto input path selector. And we have it going into input was from one, input one with left input on the inbox two. And this one here is the output, which goes to one and two output in our inbox, which leads to one and two output here in our master. So that means this track here is going to the master. See the output, that means the order level. And the order level from this track here, the output from this track, which is our snare track, is going also to the master. And so is the hi-hat. And of course, so is this new track we made up called the auxiliary one. Now, I'm going to call it a reverb track, so I have to name my tracks before I do anything else. Go right down here. I'll click on it, and I want to give it a name. So I'll call it Reverb. There you go. And I can make a comment if I want to. I'm going to maybe call it some. This is for my drums. Drums. Verb. Bam. There we go. And I see the comments right below that in the track. See that? Drums verb. Get an idea of what's going on in case I get lost. So, in order for me to do this reverb thing, I need to put a reverb in this track. Let's go to here, and we're going to try and find a reverb we got we might like. And here's a reverb right there. Let's try a, let's try a D verb. That's always a cool one to use right now. I'll get a simple verb going on here. Uh, let's look for a preset maybe. Or what do we got going here? We got D verb. We got factory installed. Here's some presets. Let's go with a simple, um, simple gate. We got some still a lot of verbs. Look at this. A lot of verbs we got going on here. I want to use a simple verb, not too much, maybe a plate, not a vocal plate, but a small one. Let's see what we got down here. This is the full line of what we got in here. Um, here's a short plate. Let's try this short plate for a second here. Bam. Now I'll close that up. Got a short plate in that track. I'll play the drum track. And there's nothing going in that reverb. Reverb's empty totally. No reverb at all into that auxiliary track. We must assign an input. It says no input right there under I.O. Go to I.O. Interface, there's no input. Let's go below that. We want to assign a bus assignment. So it's going to be bus 1 and 2 stereo. Got it. Now, we'll press play. Nothing's going in there yet. Now, what we need to do right now, we need to send these signals from the kick, snare, and hi-hat in there. If you want to put a reverb on those drum items. Let's go here. I'm going to do the um, snare first. So go ahead to my snare track, and I'm going to go to bus. Look at this list here we got for bus. This is a big list, because this is the stereo. This is the mono, the stereo, the mono. So we got 32 tracks. So we got a lot of stuff to do, but I want to do this one and two. So I want to send this out. Uh, this is only a mono track anyway, so, um, but I want to send it out in stereo. Now if I send out a mono, watch this. I'm going to go to mono here. And we'll send it here. You see that the little fader came up here. We'll move it to here and we'll press play. 
See, it's going mono into that track. Now I'll mute the uh, kick and the hi-hat. Whoops, see that? I'm gonna go back into here, and it's a group. Turn the group off, close the outside sidebar. Now I'm gonna mute this one and this one. And now, you see that. But I want you to notice right here too that it's stereo, it's still coming out stereo, it's going like left and right. In this auxiliary reverb track for the drums, our drum verb track, it's going in stereo. Now you'll see here in the send that I've selected just the left. If I go just to the right, watch this. We'll press, let's see, play. And you'll see right here in that verb there, it's going left and right. Now I'll turn the signal up here. And that's sending more of this signal directly into this reverb. I'll bring it down. I'll bring it all the way down. See, now it is all the way here is the signal. That's a direct sound without the reverb. More reverb. So we're getting a balance between the dry sound, which is this sound, and the wet sound. Let's stop this. Now that was mono left first, and we just did mono right. right? These are mono signals going into a stereo bus, which is right here. As you can see right there on our auxiliary reverb. Now watch this. We're going to go back here now, and we're going to go and use a bus one and two. See, you hear virtually no difference, right? So you hear a little more reverb hitting there. Hit it. Now watch. Let's stop this now. And we're going to go back, and then I'm going to leave that there. And I'm going to change this assignment again and make it just one. So you see the difference? I got it way up now. Now when it's a stereo bus, there's almost more of the signal going in there. And now, that's all the way up there, and you heard the difference. So, with your mono bus, you get less of the send of the signal going directly into this stereo auxiliary track. Be aware of that. It's important to know. Now, next thing we're going to do right here is we're going to go back in and we're going to label this. And we're going to go to Setup, I.O. There's an I.O. setup right here. And I'm going to go to bus. That's my drum verb. I want to call it a drum verb. I want to know when I go back and pull the session back up. You know, I could have been drunk last night, hang out with the boys. Hey, what's up? I come back, huh? What did I do? Here's what you do. You go, hey, you say, okay, it's a drum verb. I call it my, I got a little abbreviation here for it. That's it, my drum verb. And I know it's going to be left. I'll, I'll put one and two to say, I'll say it's one and two left and right, okay? That's it. I know it's a stereo track drum verb. I'll press OK. Okay, I press enter, now I press OK, and you'll see here in the track, it comes up as a D verb. See right there? So now I know it's a D verb, and you see it right here? It comes up as a D verb as well. So we've assigned the bus, we labeled the bus, and we know what it's going to be. When you save your session and you come back next time, hey, you won't forget it, it's right in front of you.